Hello and welcome back. This is our review on multiplying and dividing real numbers. Take a second to look at the vocabulary terms that we went over with multiplying and dividing. Stop the video for a moment and see if you can write down the definitions of each of these terms. Okay then, let's review what these are. The first one is factor. A factor is simply going to be any of the numbers that you use when you are multiplying in order to derive your answer. So any of the numbers that you are multiplying together are the factors. The factors of 25 are 5 and 5. Our second term is product. The product is simply going to be any number that you get for your answer when you multiply. 5 times 5 is 25, so 25 is the product. Inverse operation simply stands for the concept that the reverse of multiplication is division and the reverse of division is multiplication. For example, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 divided by 5 is 5. A reciprocal is simply when you take a fraction and you flip the numbers upside down on a fraction line. For example, a reciprocal would be when 1 fourth becomes 4 over 1 or just 4. The reciprocal is necessary when doing division and dividing fractions. You basically, you basically, instead of dividing, you will flip your divisor. You will flip your divisor, and you will multiply the first fraction times the reciprocal of the second fraction. Our quotient is simply the answer to any division problem. Okay, now that we've reviewed that, let's move on to two things that you already know and we didn't talk about because these are a given. These are two new concepts, but they're not so new because you've already been using them before you even saw these videos. The first one is the property of zero. So basically zero times any number is zero, and any number times zero is zero. The second uh, new concept that really is not so new is the identity property of multiplication. So basically with the identity property, we're able to see that any number times 1 is that number. And 1 times any number is still that number. For example, 1 times 4 is 4. And 4 times 1 is 4. So now that we've re reviewed all of the vocabulary terms, let's move on. We were doing a lot today, so I <laughs> I'm using something different. So let's move on to a few problems. Okay, number one says, basically this follows through for the first three questions. And the question is, would the following product be positive, negative, or zero? So would the product of these multiplication problems be po a positive, negative, or zero number? So let's take the first one. With the first one over here, we see that we're dealing with negative 5.4 times a positive 3.8. And what is the rule for multiplication when you're dealing with two numbers with unlike or different signs in front of them? Well, the rule is that the answer is going to be negative. So number one here would, in fact, be negative. Let's take a look at number two. Number two is simply negative five times zero. And as we know, when we're dealing with zero, that any number times zero is going to be zero. Number three is negative eight times seven times five. And our product here is going to be a negative, num a negative number because we have 
one negative number. If we had two, then, uh, for example, if seven were also negative, uh, then our product will be positive. But since we have an odd number of negative numbers in this multiplication problem, our answer is going to be negative. Okay, moving along. It says simply solve. Okay, and the first one is negative 3 fourths times a negative 32 times 3 and 3 sevenths times 0 times 1 sixth. And when you see something like this, and this is what's so good about math is because there are so many shortcuts if you just know what the rules are. You have a zero here. So anything before that zero times zero is going to be a zero. So what you're left with essentially is zero times one sixth. And what do we know about zero? We know that anything times zero is zero. So the answer to this very long multiplication problem with um, <laughs> unlike signs is just simply zero. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, moving, moving along. We have negative 2.36 times 0 0.7. And what we're dealing with is um, unlike signs. So we know that our product is going to be negative. And when we multiply these two numbers together, uh, when we get our answer, which is simply 1.652, uh, actually it was 1652, but um, we have three decimals here. Our decimals are seven, here we have three spaces. So the final answer would be 1652 if you were just going to multiply the numbers and you move that over three times to account for the fact that you had three decimal spaces in, your, in the numbers that you were multiplying. It's very important to remember the different things to do when you have decimals because sometimes, you know, when you add and subtract, you just line them up. Um, but when you multiply, you get involved with uh, moving them, moving them back over when you finish and so forth. Okay, let's do some division problems really quickly. We have number one here with our division problems, zero divided by negative 0 0.5 so basically um, we're dealing with the property of 0 here and our answer is simply going to be 0 <laughs> um, our answer is going to be the properties for um, division are actually different it's um, it's either going to be 0 or undefined okay so since our zero if we were going to write that into a fraction if we were going to write a fraction the zero would be at top at the top and that's why it's zero because 0 0.5 times zero equals zero okay our second one is negative 2.345 divided by zero. So now our zero is going to be at the bottom, isn't it? So we have negative 2.345 divided by zero. And this is division, so we have the division rules for zero, which is simply when it's at the bottom, you're going to have an undefined answer because zero times, well, we don't know, would be negative 2.345. You can't multiply anything times zero and end up with this number. So our answer is undefined. Okay, moving along we have an, a number three here. We have a negative four and one-half divided by one and one-eighth. So basically what we're going to do is take these mixed fractions and we're going to make an we're just going to make a dividend and a divisor there. So we'll end up with negative 9 over 2 divided by 9 over 8. And what do we do when we see a division problem? Well, 
we've, we've um, turned the mixed fraction into just fractions, but we're doing division. So now we have to use the rule of reciprocal. So this is how we're going to divide. Negative 9 over 2 times the reciprocal of 9 eighths, which is 8 ninths. Okay. So we've turned that into a multiplication problem for the sake of mathematics. The nines, I'm sorry, let's not look at this here. We're over here now. The nines cancel each other out. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into eight four times. So you're left with nothing except four. Go back to the original problem over here. We were dealing with two fractions, two mixed fractions, with unlike or different signs, the first number was negative, the second was positive. So our 4 is simply going to be a negative 4 as a final answer for that. Okay, moving along to number 4 here with our division problems. It says, determine if the quotient is positive, negative, 0, or undefined. And we have a negative 24 divided by 3. So is the quotient going to be positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Well, it's division, and we have unlike or different signs in front of our numbers, and so our quotient is going to be negative. And we only have one more, and it says, what is the reciprocal of one-third? We should all know this by now. A reciprocal is simply going to be flipping the numbers on the fraction, and so our one-third is going to become 3 over 1 or 3. So we basically covered everything.